Hello friends and welcome back. Today I'm sharing with you another indexing method created by the English philosopher John Locke in the 1600s. Uh, his method is a very unique approach to log and index the entries in your common place book. So if you follow along, um, you will probably know that I do have a common placing system, which is basically a collection of notebooks where I compile all the wisdom and the knowledge that I acquire. I mainly extract this information from um, books that I read, uh, and I record the passages and the parts that I want in my common place book, uh, which helps me greatly to digest and make sense of what I'm reading. I also add knowledge uh, I acquire from nature observation, traveling, or even a deep conversation. So, therefore, um, it's very important to index and organize my notebooks because it helps me a lot to easily retrieve my notes whenever I need. So let's dive into the John Locke method. So you will be interested in this method for two reasons. One, it's concise, which means brief yet comprehensive. Two, it's very flexible because in comparison with other established methods, it allows you to build an expendable index with the minimal waste of paper and space. Because we all have the same question as notebook keepers, how many pages I need to assign for my index. So here we go, two pages according to John Locke. Now, how does this index function depends highly on the layout of the page. So let's start by the structure of the table. The first, of course, is you need to select a notebook of any size you see fit for the subject. The second thing is you need to dedicate the first, or maybe like me, the last two pages facing one another. And this is the place where you will add the index table. Number three, you will add a black vertical line to divide each page into two halves. Followed by that, we will add horizontal black lines to fit five or six sections depending on the size of your notebook. Then we will subdivide each section with four red horizontal lines. And before last, we will add a narrow margin for each half to add the alphabet letters in their natural order and a second narrow margin for each half as well to add the vowels in their natural order. So now that we have the table ready, let's see how it functions. When we think about indexing, we think about a keyword. So let's take, for example, I need to index the content of page three, which you can see has minimal written information, but you can tell that the page is dedicated to La Joconde. Okay, so how will I index this? Obviously, I, the keyword assigned here, which will be the essential word to best express the subject matter in hand, will be Joconde. In that case, according to John Locke method, this word will not be fully written, will be indexed based on the first letter and the first following vowel. So that will be the first letter J, followed by O, and here I have page three. Okay, so let's say the other way around. I come back weeks or months later and I check my art commonplace book and let's say I need to look for pages with any reference of Rembrandt. Now, in this case, the first letter is R, so I'll go to R, followed by E, the vowel E, and I see page four. I go check page four and I see the Rembrandt famous um, painting, the anatomy lesson with some information with it. And the list goes on. Let's say Shakespeare. That will be S and the following vowel will be A, page 17. Here we go. I have this spread dedicated for uh, the poem taken from the two gentlemen of Verona written by Shakespeare. If you have multiple page numbers, because maybe there was another topic that also the keyword started with SA, then you will start to check all the pages. However, to make it easier in this case for you, John Locke recommends that this keyword should be written in a relatively larger font in the page itself, this keyword, and it's ideally to be as a title and added in a margin. So I usually add margins in all of my commonplace books and I add keywords into my margins. I did actually have a video for this, but because this is my art commonplace, I kind of left it in a more artistic freestyle. I don't have margins, but I do add the keywords in larger font and in a form of a heading. 
Okay, and the list, of course, can go on. Let's think about another artist, Morio, M. You. And in this case, I have a range of pages. So obviously, I had information about this artist for more than one page. Let's check it out. Okay, so page 23, and I had notes about the works of Murillo, who was very uh, famous with paintings of charity and biblical events, all the way to page 30. Now, in the unlike event that you have a word that starts with a vowel and only contains one vowel, in that case, according to John Locke, this vowel will be at the same time both the letter and the characteristic vowel. The important note about this method that it works personally for me the best when the commonplace book is entirely dedicated for one specific topic, like this case here. This is 100% dedicated for artwork. Because, remember, you don't see the keyword fully written, right? We're only having a reference for the word based on the first letter and the following vowel. So in this case, when I am thinking about one specific topic, it's easier for my brain to think about that keyword um, because all my focus orbits around maybe the name of the artist or the type of art, like in this spread here, page 31 and 32, I will index this as the type of art ballet. I must have, yes, a reference under B, A, page 31. Now, if your commonplace book is like this particular one, which I shared a lot of information about it, it includes general knowledge. In this one, I have history, mathematics, science, uh, some about art. Then I recommend the standard way to index your commonplace book by having few pages and tables assigned letters where you write the full keyword. This will be much easier because it's hard to predict it based on the first two letters when the topics are so diverse. Yes, it will occupy more pages, but for me it's easier when I have so many topics in one notebook. But in that case, I obviously um, follow along the same train of thoughts, so it's much easier for me to benefit from this um, concise, abbreviated system developed by John Locke. So let me know if you found it interesting and if you ever tried it before. I would like to hear your comments and also your tips. Thank you so much. See you in the next video.